Hi, this is Scott Meineke with the Iowa Association of Electric Cooperatives. I've got a short program for electrical safety for horizontal directional drilling contractors. Please read and understand the following disclaimer before you begin. Make sure you follow all federal, state, and local regulations. Make sure you follow all operators' manuals for each machine and piece of equipment and all manufacturers' directions. Make sure that you follow your own company procedures as well. The objectives of this course are to identify a one-call system, recognize hazards of unmarked facilities, recognize indicators of unmarked facilities, identify electrical risks, and list precautions that can be taken to increase safety. This is taken directly from the Iowa uh, one-call system website. There are five steps for safe digging. The first one is make sure that you notify the 811 system and request this online two to three days before you start the job. Wait those two to three days for a response to your request. All affected utilities will send a locator to mark the underground utility lines. Then confirm that all affected utilities have responded by comparing the markers to the list of utilities the 811 call center notified. So look around, look for other indications and signs. Also understand that they may be uh, locally owned facilities that are not participating in the one call system. So it is still possible that things didn't get located. So you need to be responsible and look for other indications of things. One example is locally owned propane tanks with a propane line running to their owned facility or a gas line that's owned by them, water lines that are owned by the local facility as well. Uh, so look for these other indicators. Respect the marks, uh, make sure that they're they're, they're going to be there for the duration of the project, and if they need to be refreshed, call in another locate. Dig carefully. If you can avoid digging near the markers within 18 to 24 inches on all sides, uh, depending on the state laws, consider moving your project if you if you can't. Um, the other thing is, is uh, make sure you use your one call system. I would recommend beyond this program for you to go online to the Iowa one call system if you're in our state and uh, do some research on this. Know the website. There's some great, great training resources available on here and some explanations. One of those resources is an online excavator's manual. You really need to read and understand this online excavator manual, and it is available on the Iowa website as well. The most current one was published in 2017. If you're watching this later, make sure you're reading the most current one available. One of the things that we do is, is we use colored flags and there's a, a national standard for what these colors are. White is proposed excavation. You need to have the white lines put down where you're going to put the service in and be available if questions need to be asked of you. And then of course the other colors are there. Since we're the electrical, uh, we're the red color on that point. There's a hand dig, hand dig zone in, in all of this that we do. Um, I've selected a picture here that shows a 56 inch hand total hand dig zone. That's 18 inches on each side of the underground facility, allowing for 20 inches because in this case, maybe the pipe or the material that's being located is wider than the flag of obviously. Um, so we need to add a little bit of distance to each one of those. If you are within that area, you need to hand dig. Uh, one of the most common ways to hand dig now is the vac machine. Um, don't assume there's a, a depth for any of our facilities. They may have been installed at a, at a minimum depth or around the minimum depth, but if the ground has been taken away or if it's been added to, these depths can alter considerably. Um, they also could go quite a bit deeper depending on how the facility was put in. So what if there are no marks? You know, you get to the job site and uh, you see a green box like this, and obviously that's a utility box. Um, it would be labeled on the outside. There isn't actually a sticker on that one indicating utility, but, but there would be a utility indicator on there with a phone number. If you get there and you see no flags around that, you know there's cables coming out of that. I think that's the responsibility of any reasonable person on the job site is to look at those and go, huh, there's no flag, something's up here. Call the number on that box, call the one call system again. Do not just assume that it's okay for you to dig there. 
you need to contact that person. That can create quite a bit of problems. Again, step number three was confirm that all affected utilities have responded by comparing the markers to the list of utilities on the 811 call center notified. So double check things. Remember, they're not moving. I always compare this to a car accident. A car comes off the road and hits a pole. They can't blame the utility because they hit the pole at that point. The pole didn't move. The car did. So it's important that we, we pay attention to this and respect this uh, the markers on the box at least, they'll say don't dig in that area as well. So what could go wrong, you know? I Honestly, that's a picture of my trencher. My trencher found the only hole in that entire field to bury itself in. Well, obviously the operator buried it. Um, I wasn't operating at the time, but the operator buried it and just continued to go. Um, so things go wrong. Picture like this, hey, that's just uh, almost a reasonable suspicion at that point. Somebody couldn't trench straight at all. What else could go wrong? Well, you know, I'm focusing on the electrical hazards, but certainly this is what happens when somebody hits a gas line in a terrible situation as shown here. Here's another one. You know, this is the stuff that makes the nightly news. Uh, we, we really don't want to make the news if we don't have to. Here's a nice little video I found. You know, a lot of people say, well, whose fault is that? Was the was it located or not? It really doesn't matter whose fault it is when you're the one that has the fire in your face. So, you know, the last thing at that point is, is the concern, or the first thing is a concern for somebody's safety. That pipe didn't move. They hit it. So remember, take the time, confirm your locates, and hand dig if there's any concern at that point. This one, um, I had to take the language. It, it was a great video because it, you can actually hear the physical arcing that's going on, but I had to take it out because the, the guy's uh, language is terrible on this. But they were backhoeing a trench, and obviously, look at the pole. There are lines coming off of that pole. There's a sign on the other side of that pole that says underground utilities in this area. Um, because it wasn't marked, this crew just decided, oh, it's not, a, not our problem at that point. Well, it's certainly their problem now. Um, so take the time, slow down, call in to locate again, or double check. Don't just begin to dig and assume everything's going to be all right. The discussion that's going on that I, that I filtered out of this is the operator of that backhoe wants to climb back on the machine to get his bucket off the line because he thinks it's messing the bucket up. And the other guy is yelling at him, don't touch the machine. And obviously that machine would be energized and he could be killed if he touched that machine. So they did the right thing by getting away from it. Unfortunately, nobody was injured in that process. So if the cable's in the ground, how can it, how can I be shocked by it? You know, a lot of people think, well, if it's in the ground, it's grounded, right? It can't be shocked. And, and, that's not necessarily the case. So let's take a look at how you could get shocked. Well, the first one, you could make direct contact with it. If it's skinned off and you're hand digging and you, you get a little bit uh, too zealous with your with your spade or whatever, or using a pick because the ground is so hard, you could actually make contact with the line. Now our lines could be lower voltage. They could be one, you know, they could be 110 volts, 240 volts, but they could be primary voltage also. So 7,200 volts and above. So you know, be careful around that wire. You could make direct contact and obviously be shocked. The second one is step potential. Say that you're, you're directional drilling and you're running your locator above the directional drill and they drill into an underground cable. When that happens, current can flow through the ground and from one foot to the next, you can have a difference of potential. That's why we call it step potential. It's as though you stepped from one potential to another through the ground because of current flow. Um, the Department of Natural Resources shocks fish out of the lakes using this process. By uh, determining the voltage, it, it shocks the fish from one point to the next. In this case, if you felt a shock, you could pull one foot up quickly uh, or shuffle away from that point um, if you could still move. Hopefully, you'll never experience that. And there's some ways we can protect ourselves from that as well. Another one is touch potential. 
Now the operator setting on a directional drill should be fine. Um, in fact, you should have an electric strike indicator on your machine. Many do. Uh, make sure that it's functioning properly and you're setting it up properly. You actually have to generally put a stake out in the ground in order to make it work. Uh, make sure you're using that because that should give the operator an indicator that they've hit a line. Now, if they're setting on the machine, they're kind of like a bird on a wire. Um, they don't have a difference of potential, so they don't get shocked. But if anybody walks up and touches that machine, and it was energized, there would be touch potential. So again, the voltage in the earth would be different potential than the machine touching the wire. So if they touch that machine, they could become shocked as well. As an operator, remind people not to touch your machine while you're digging. Um, I've had one guy tell me, well, just back up and then you're not on the line anymore. Well, the thing is, that doesn't necessarily mean that's where you hit the wire. If you drilled straight into the wire, that'd be one thing. But what if you just brushed past the wire while you were drilling and as you continued to turn your rod as you were drilling away it rubbed through the conductor so you could have a wire strike part way down your rod not all the way to the tip so backing up wouldn't actually take you off of that so be aware that just retracting your your rod doesn't mean you're going to shut that machine or current flow off at that point point. and again tell people not to touch your machine or stand close to it while you're while you're drilling some of the safety devices that are out there that are available for you, there are some uh, dielectric boots that you can wear. Um, that's that's a really a great way for the person that's running the uh, cable locator above the, the uh, tip uh, to protect themselves from that step potential at that point. It would also protect anybody standing near the machine from that touch potential. Um, if the operator wore them and uh, got off of the machine, say it caught on fire because of the current flow, uh, and they needed to escape the machine, having those boots on would protect that uh, operator as well, as long as they're taken care of and tested regularly to make sure that they're still safe. Just beating around in the truck or leaving them in the sun too long, um, they could become damaged and not do the job that you need them to do. The other thing is uh, there are some conductive mats that you can get. Uh, I know other others are available. This is just one example that's out there. Um, it's got a wire mesh grid on it and is connected to that truck. That's a little different than the underground side of it, but um, it creates a zone of equalized potential, which means he's standing on the same electrical plate that the truck is. So there's no difference of potential, which is what you need in order for electricity current to flow. So the best way to protect yourself and others is to not hit the wire or any other underground to begin with. I mean, that, that's the best way. So make sure you're doing the layout of the job, your preparation of the job to ensure that you're not going to hit any other facilities that are there. Take the time. If you see indicators of lines that are there, but there's no locates done for them, you need to make sure that we secure that. Remember this. It didn't move. You hit it. Just like the car hitting a pole. It didn't move. You hit it. So uh, pay attention to this and work safe. Thanks for watching this, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me at the Iowa Association of Electric Cooperatives, and I'll try to help you out.